I'd like to welcome Ben Martin back to the program. Now, Ben, you have, are becoming a regular on the program. Thanks it's very much. Great to have you on again. I very much enjoy being here. Good. Now, what have you brought in today? Uh, You've got uh, some paintings with yeah, you. Some photographs, some prints, some oleographs, which is an interesting word, okay. and right through to some oil paintings. We're going to talk about the differences in the uh, from a print right through to an oil painting, what you might have around your house yes. and what you might think might be a print or an oil painting might be something completely different. And so we're just going to go through and have a look at each one individually. Yes, if, I'm glad I didn't bring anything in today. That's OK. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Because that's I was so disappointed the last time. But you do, I mean, you have these things given to you. Absolutely. Passed down through the family that you think, oh, this is lovely. Um, it must be worth a bit of money, but obviously not everything yeah, is. Yeah, and there's a few tricks and surprises out there, as is always in an industry. Yeah. And some things are worth very little, some things are worth very a lot, and other things are worth a lot just to yourself. That's what yeah. we always try and say. Family, personal memories and yeah. such. So what have we got first? Well, up? the first thing here is like, this is what is in the eye of the beholder. This is a photo. This is where it all basically starts. A photo of, it could be in your mind or in, you know, yourself, or someone takes the picture, okay? And yeah. this is, and a photo can actually be worth a lot of money. But actually, it's, it's probably the bottom line of all the things is, is a photograph. Right. OK, it's very simple to replicate. So this might have been just something that um, somebody's taken of where they lived or, you know, where family came from yep. um, and have had it framed. So of personal value. Absolutely, but a very little uh, worth in the antique okay. industry. But however, anyone can do it and it can be mass produced. That's the whole idea about it. And that's people can just take a photograph. And enjoy it for the rest of their lives. Yeah, yeah. So okay. that's very, so that's... very common thing. Everyone would have a photograph around their house. I have a few. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not worth much at all. <laughs> the next one is a very nice Japanese print, okay? A print started over 3,000 years ago when people saw something lovely, they wanted to have it themselves, but they could never afford it. So the idea was to print it, okay? And they ran copies and copies and copies. And so these days, they're still made. This was. A Takeshi print. Yes. And the Takeshi paintings, they're worth 20 to 40, 50,000 euros. <gasps> so if you want a real one, you're not going to get one. No. <laughs> well, but, and then most of them are in the museums. Yes. And now as a print, you can have a limitless amount of copies. So how much for a print then? I mean, obviously. This is probably going to set you back retail about 60 to $80. Oh, OK. So However, still. Again, when you look at a print, they could be a different. They can be a run or a limited edition of prints. Mm. And you look down the bottom, and you'll see some. On this one, unfortunately, it's not, not there, there. But you'll see a signed print. You might see John Smith, one of forty. So that's oh. all the runs that they've done. Oh. So that makes it a little bit special, a little bit more important. Mm. But this one, there's probably four to five million copies of them around the world. Okay, right. Well, it's okay. still lovely. The, yeah, the money's worth the frame <laughs> okay. because it's a lovely framing. <laughs> right, so I agree with you there. So what have we got next? And next, this is what a lot Tilt of people have around the house, okay? Yeah. And this is an etching, okay? So the etcher is actually the most qualified person in the, you know, it's better than a painter, better than a sculptor. They're an etcher that's an amazing art. Okay, but again, it's a simple print. It's etched into a piece of metal. They pour acid over the top of it. Oh. And then go shh, 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 like that. And what's left is your etching. Right. And what down, usually, they'll sign it in lead pencil. Yes, okay. there is a signature there. Down there. And they're a wonderful way, again, to mass produce something. But just with that little bit more skill, a little bit more uh, petiteness and... Uh, Many households would have an etching around the house. So, but again, it's not an oil painting. It's not uh, a watercolour. It's an etching. So it's still actually mass produced. Value then? Is this it... one again, $40 to $50, but this is in a gilt frame. Yeah. Okay. Again, some etchings can go right up. And most of the fine artists, the Masters series of Rembrandt and all that, they, they're from etchings, okay? And you'll see them etching, those etchings can still fetch in the tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Okay? But, again, a wonderful thing to have. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's not very and big. And again, mass produced. Yep, okay. Right. <sighs> this one, okay, this is when it gets tricky, okay? The see, I, I would look at that and think, well, that's worth a lot of money. The, obviously, the frame's damaged. The frame's damaged. very damaged. It's very early. It's about 1820. Mm. 
okay? And it hasn't, it's had a bit of a life to it, but the frame's very damaged. It's like somebody's thrown it around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's not laughs> Unfortunately, <alive>. yes. <laughs> However, what someone's tried to do is make it look like an oil painting. Right. And this is called an oleograph, okay, or a lithograph. In it, and they go, they stencil and they go over and over in different colours and different colours and different colours until it looks and you can feel it and you go, well, that actually feels like an oil painting. Right. But actually, it's just a print again. And the way to, and what people did over the centuries, especially in the 19th century, to make look like they went to stately homes, they had a lovely oil paint, they go, I've got that, but actually they just had an oleograph. Ah. This one, however, it's got a little trick to it as well. The viewers might want to have a bit of a interest. In the Victorian times, you weren't supposed to see things like this underneath. Ah. <laughs> I love it. So you weren't supposed to have, have that on display. How funny. And underneath a bit of a sneaky peek of um, I've never seen anything like, like that quite before. Like it. And um, so, do you know what? Now you've got people going around their homes with paintings like that, seeing if they can <laughs> open them up and go, "What's behind it?" <sighs> and you know, a lot of um, things were hidden over the years, painted over, uh, hidden behind walls, behind other pictures, behind yeah. other canvases, and the real things actually behind. That's a star. So you can go around but, to your house and check and see if it's there. <laughs> if there's a hinge there <laughs> somewhere. Is, or anything, yeah. But is, so is that done the same Again, way? Again, this is an oleograph, ah, okay? okay. Looks like an oil paint. Actually, feels, if you feel well, that, you can Janice, see the No, but you can see the difference even from the front one to the back one. Yep. It's actually, that's quite shiny, whereas that yeah, other yeah, one's but, matte. Yeah, and you can actually feel it, but they've just, again, just laid it over the top mm. and over the top and over the top mm. again. And again, it's still not an oil painting or a watercolour or a pastel, so you still, you know what, anyone could do it. It's still well, just mass produced. Right. I think you need to fix the frame up. I don't know, poor old thing. <laughs> what a shame. So okay. what's next? And the final one we've got is what you desire and what everyone desires in the end is the oil painting, yeah. okay? And you can see, can you it's see well the difference there? Yeah. And you can actually see, and you can feel, you're not really supposed to touch paint when you're at the gallery. <laughs> it always says don't touch. No. Okay, but what you want to do when you're purchasing or around the house is actually feel it and you can, you can feel the oil raised the on the canvas. Textures. Or the watercolour or the paint or the pastel and you mm. can see it and the texture and this is what you get. You actually get someone that sat down and done it. It's hand done, it's beautifully presented. And this is from, a, from an early Australian artist. Yes, the um, signatures at the bottom. Down here, Lupsom. He was a, a convict artist in between 1840 and 1880 and he just painted uh, around the Sydney area and he did quite well. Mm. Okay, it's just local uh, landscapes. So is that worth a bit of money, Ben? This one, around three to five hundred. Oh, okay. So still not huge amounts of no. money, okay? But it's what you want to in the antique trade. This is where you want to head for the actual watercolour, mm. or the actual oil, or the actual pastel. And that's the top of the game once you start dealing in that. That hasn't got any hinges. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing hidden? Nothing in you, the back? As you can see, <laughs> someone has had a good old look at ripping yeah. it apart to see oh, what was behind oh, it. Oh, they did too. Yeah. And stuck it all back together again. And that's the name of the game. When you, you get a house full of these, yep. you've done well. Very lucky. <laughs> I'm aiming. <laughs> Try. Absolutely. When I win the lottery. Well done. Thank you. That's interesting to see those different types. Absolutely. Um, so, giving us something to think about. Just absolutely. Go around the house and check out what you've got. And, and if you do think that you have something, we can get in touch with Ben here. and Bring if, it in. Yeah, bring it in to Ben. Uh, Peddler's Antiques yep. and could be moving up to Handorf at some yep, stage. Shortly, so hopefully in the next couple of months spreading we'll be himself moving around, up to Handorf and you could probably bring your stock up there and, and, and I'll have a look it at it for you. Just to uh, make sure that it's the real, real thing. Oh, Absolutely, be a pleasure. <laughs> I'm going home after this to check out all my, not that I've got many. Oh, you'd be surprised. I'll what find people, some. Yeah, people bring <laughs> us in things all the time we go, oh actually, that is something. Do you get people, you know, like, are you sometimes gobsmacked as to what people Absolutely. have and they've got no idea yep. that it's worth something? Absolutely, all the time. How exciting. For them, more excitement than you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Ben. It's always it's a been, pleasure. Yeah, it's been great. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. See you next time.